If you think about it, people wake up in the morning, uh, they begin to think about their problems. Those problems are circuits of memories in the brain. Each one of those memories are connected to people and things at certain times and places. And if the brain is a record of the past, the moment they start their day, they're already thinking in the past. Each one of those memories has an emotion. Emotions are the end product of past experiences. So the moment they recall those memories of their problems, they all of a sudden feel unhappy, they feel sad, they feel pain. Now, how you think and how you feel creates your state of being. So the person's entire state of being when they start their day is in the past. So what does that mean? The familiar past will sooner or later be predictable future. So if you believe that your thoughts have something to do with your destiny, and you can't think greater than how you feel, or feelings have become the means of thinking, by very definition of emotions, you're thinking in the past. And for the most part, you're gonna keep creating the same life. So then people grab their cell phone, they check their WhatsApp, they check their texts, they check their emails, they check Facebook, they take a picture of their feet, they post it on Facebook, they tweet something, they do Instagram, uh, they check the news, and now they feel really connected to everything that's known in their life. And then they go through a series of routine behaviors. They get out of bed on the same side, they go to the toilet, they get a cup of coffee, they take a shower, they get dressed, they drive to work the same way, they do the same things, they see the same people, they push the same emotional buttons, and that becomes the routine, and it becomes like a program. So now they've lost their free will to a program, and there's no unseen hand doing it to them. So when it comes time to change, the re redundancy of that cycle becomes a subconscious program. So now, 95% of who we are by the time we're 35 years old is a memorized set of behaviors, emotional reactions, unconscious habits, hardwired attitudes, beliefs, and perceptions that function like a computer program. So then, a person can say with their 5% of their conscious mind, I want to be healthy, I want to be happy, I want to be free. But the body's on a whole different program. So then, how do you begin to make those changes? Well you have to get beyond the analytical mind because what separates the conscious mind from the subconscious mind is the analytical mind. And that's where meditation comes in because you can teach people through practice how to change their brain waves, slow them down. And when they do that properly, they do enter the operating system where they can begin to make some really important changes. So um, most people then wait for crisis or trauma or disease or diagnosis, you know, they wait for loss. Uh, some tragedy to make up their mind to change and my message is why wait and and you can learn and change in a state of pain and suffering or you can learn and change in a state of joy and inspiration and I think right now the cool thing is that people are waking up most people spend 70 percent of their life living in survival and living in stress so they're they're always anticipating the worst case scenario based on a past experience and they're literally out of the infinite potentials in the quantum field, they're selecting the worst possible outcome and they're beginning to emotionally embrace it with fear and they're conditioning their body into a state of fear. Do that enough times, the body has a panic attack without you. you. You can't even predict it because it's programmed subconsciously. People become addicted to the rush of those emotions and they use the problems and conditions in their life to reaffirm their limitation so at least they can feel something. So now when it comes time to change, you say to the person, why are you this way? Well, every time they recall the event, they're producing the same chemistry in their brain and body as if the event is occurring. Firing and wiring the same circuits and sending the same emotional signature to the body. Well, what's the relevance behind that? Well, your body is the unconscious mind. It doesn't know the difference between the experience that's creating the emotion and the emotion that you're creating by thought alone. So the body's believing is living in the same past experience 24 hours a day, seven days a week, 365 days a year. And so then when those emotions influence certain thoughts, and they do, and then those thoughts create the same emotions, and those same emotions influence the same thoughts, now the entire person's uh, state of being is in the past. So then the hardest part about change is not making the same choice as you did the day before, period. And the moment you decide to make a different choice, get ready because it's going to feel uncomfortable. It's going to feel unfamiliar. It, there's going to be some why, uncertainty. Why does it feel so uncomfortable? Is it because of the, the, the neurons that fire together, wire together, so I've, there's like an easiness to that loop? Just because literally, and you've talked very eloquently about this, 
the way that the neurons connect in the brain, how rapidly, I've seen you show footage of how yeah. rapidly those connections happen, which is pretty incredible. Um, is, is that what makes it so discomforting for people? I think that, I think that the bigger thing is that we, we keep firing and wiring those circuits, they become more hardwired. So you have a thought and then the program runs. But it's the emotion that follows the thought. If you have a, if you have a fearful thought, you're going to feel anxiety. The moment you feel anxiety, your brain's checking in with your body and saying, yeah, you're pretty anxious. So then you start thinking more corresponding thoughts equal to how you feel. Well, the redundancy of that cycle conditions the body to become the mind. So now, when it comes time to change, a person steps into that river of change and they make a different choice and all of a sudden, they, they don't feel the same way. So the body says, well, you've been doing this for 35 years. Uh, oh, you're, you're gonna just stop feel, suffering and stop feeling guilty and stop feeling shameful and you're not gonna complain or blame or make excuses or feel sorry for yourself. Well, <laughs> the body's in the unknown. So the body says, I want to return back to familiar ter territory. So the body starts influencing the mind and it says, start tomorrow. You're too much like your mother. You'll never change. This isn't going to work for you. This doesn't feel right. Uh, and so if you respond to that thought as if it's true, that same thought will lead to the same choice, which will lead to the same behavior, which will create the same experience, which will produce the same emotion. I want to talk about that notion of Give me a little more detail on what you mean by the body becomes the mind or the unconscious mind. What do you mean by that exactly? Well, those are two different things. Your body is your unconscious mind. In a sense, if you're sitting down and you start thinking about uh, some future worst case scenario that you're conjuring up in your mind, and you begin to feel the emotion of that event, your body doesn't know the difference between the event that's taking place in your world, outer world, and what you're creating by emotion or thought alone. So most people then, they're, they're constantly reaffirming their emotional states. So when it comes time to give up that emotion, they can say, I really want to do it, but really the body is stronger than the mind because it's been conditioned that way. So the servant now has become the master, and the person all of a sudden, once they step into that unknown, they'd rather feel guilt and suffering because at least they can predict it. Being in the unknown is a scary place for most people because the unknown is uncertain. And people say to me, well, I can't predict my future. I'm in the unknown and I always say the best way to predict your future is to create it. Not from the known, but from the unknown. What thoughts do you want to fire and wire in your brain? What behaviors do you want to demonstrate in one day? The act of rehearsing them mentally, closing your eyes and rehearsing the action the rehearsing the reaction of what you want? or the Yeah, action the action of what you want. By closing your eyes and mentally rehearsing some action, if you're truly present, the brain does not know the difference between what you're imaging and what you're experiencing in 3D world. So then you begin to install the neurological hardware in your brain to look like the event has already occurred. Now, your brain is no longer a record of the past. Now it's a map to the future. And if you keep doing it, priming it that way, the hardware becomes a software program, and who knows, you just may start acting like a happy person. And then I think the, the hardest part is to teach our body emotionally what the future will feel like ahead of the actual experience. So what does that mean? You can't wait for your success to feel empowered. You can't wait for your wealth to feel abundant. You can't wait for your, your new relationship to feel love or uh, uh, your healing to feel whole. I mean, that's the old model of reality, of cause and effect, you know, waiting for something outside of us to change how we feel inside of us. And when we feel better inside of us, we pay attention to whoever or whatever caused it. But what that means then is that from the Newtonian world is that most people spend their whole life living in lack, waiting for something to change out there. What do you mean the Newtonian world? The Newtonian world is all about the predictable. It's all about predicting a future. But the quantum model of reality is, is about causing an effect. The moment you start feeling abundant and worthy, you are generating wealth. The moment you're empowered and feel it, you're beginning to step towards your success. The moment you start feeling whole, your healing begins. And when you love yourself and you love all of life, you'll create an equal. And now you're causing an effect. And I think that's the, the difference between living as a victim in your world saying, I am this way because of this person or that thing or this experience. They made me think and feel this way. 
When you switch that around, you become a creator of your world and you start saying, my thinking and my feeling is changing an outcome in my life and now that's a whole different game and we start believing more that we're creators of reality. Most people, uh, when they have a thought, they just think that that's the truth. And I think one of my greatest realizations in my own journey was just because you have a thought doesn't necessarily mean it's true. So if you think 60 to 70,000 thoughts in one day, and we do, and 90% of those thoughts are the same thoughts as the day before, and you believe that your thoughts have something to do with your destiny, your life's not going to change very much because the same thought leads to the same choice, the same choice leads to the same behavior, the same behavior creates the same experience, and the same experience produces the same emotion. The act of becoming conscious of this process to, to begin to become more aware of how you think, how you act, and how you feel. It's called metacognition. And so then, why is that important? Because the more conscious you become of those unconscious states of mind and body, the less likely you're going to go unconscious during the day. And that thought is not going to slip by your awareness unchecked because you're, it means to know thyself. And the word meditation means to become familiar with. So as you become familiar with the thoughts, the behaviors, and the emotions of the old self, you're retiring that old self. As you fire and wire new thoughts and condition the body into a new emotional state, if you do that enough times, it'll begin to become familiar to you. So it's so important, just like a garden. If you're planting a garden, you gotta get rid of the weeds. You gotta take the plants from the past year and you gotta pull them out. The rocks that sift to the top that are like our emotional blocks, they have to be removed. The soil has to be tenderized and broken down. We have to we have to make room to plant a new garden. So primarily, we learn the most about ourselves and others when we're uncomfortable. Because the moment you move into that uncomfortable state, normally a program jumps in. When that program jumps in, it's because the person doesn't want to be in the present moment and engage it consciously. So when you teach people how to do that with a meditative process, it turns out that when they're in their life, they're less likely to emotionally react. They're less likely to be so rigid and believe the thoughts they were thinking. They're more aware of when they go unconscious back into a habit, and that is what starts the process of change. People will, will shrink back into mediocrity, and they'll use the insight to excuse them from taking a leap. They'll say, yeah, you know, I have a chemical imbalance in my brain. Yeah, my father was really overbearing. He was a perfectionist. That's why I am the way I am. You know, people, they, they come up with stuff to, to excuse themselves. The insight is actually giving them permission to stay limited. And it's, 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 it's an amazing idea because they'll say to you that they really want to get over their anxiety. And so we have to unlearn before we relearn. We have to break the habit of the old self.